Hello everybody. So here we're going to cover the questions from unit 4.5 using graphs to estimate values. And we're going to start with question one and go all the way to question 10. Question number one for discuss the ideas asks us, what is interpolation? When do we use it? B asks, what is extrapolation? And when do we use it? So we talked about this in the last video when we were discussing unit 4.5. And we have the answer right over here. Interpolation is estimating a value that lies between two data points on a graph. We use interpolation when we know two uh, values between which the required values lie. So what that basically means is we use interpolation when we know the answer to our question can be found in the data inside of the graph. Extrapolation is estimating a value that lies beyond the graph uh, are beyond the data points on the graph. We use extrapolation when the required value is greater than the greatest given value or less than the least given value. In other words, if we need to look beyond the data on the chart, if we need to extend the chart to predict what a value will be, that's when we are using extrapolation. Question two. When we extrapolate, why is it important to know that the data represents a linear relation? Well, as I just said, extrapolation means that we are making a prediction, which means that we need to know, we need to use the data that we, uh, we have right now to make a prediction about the future. So when we extrapolate, if the data do not, do not represent a linear relation, then our estimate is not valid. In example two, we assumed that Maya continued to jog at the same average speed and based our esti estimate for the distance she will travel in 14 minutes on this assumption. If Maya slows down or speeds up, our prediction will be incorrect and not valid. So that's why it need, we have to assume that it's gonna stay linear. If it's not linear, then our estimate no longer is valid. What problems might there be if you extrapolate far beyond the last data point? So that means if we are extrapolating far beyond the data that we currently have, what problems can we expect? When we extrapolate far beyond the last data point, we may not place the ruler exactly in the right place to extend the line. The position of the endpoint of the line could be off by several squares and the estimate would not be close to the exact value. Also, the relation might not continue to be linear. There you go. So those are the explore the idea questions and answers. Moving on to question number four. Question number four. This graph represents a linear relation. We have a straight line going right here. 1.2 data points. Determine each value of x for 1 when y equals 5. So when I look at this, I need to then go to where y would equal 5, which is right here. And this is how I would do this one. I would go up. Oh, so I'll just say for number 4a.1, um, I know that when y equals 5, that would be right here. I can then come across to this point here, straight down to here, and find out what my x value would be. So when y equals 5, x equals 6. Now for part or point 2, we can see here y equals negative 1. So right here is where y equals negative 1. And since we're already, in this case, this is where y equals negative 1, and we're on the red line. So since we know that y equals negative 1 at this point, and we can see it right here already on the red line, our x value at this point is 0. So I don't need to trap, I don't need to make a line like this. I'm already on my red line. So I can tell at this point, since I'm already on the red line, x 
equals zero. Then for number three, y equals negative two. So in this case here, y is negative two. I would need to travel over this way until I reach the line and then back up to my x-axis right here, which is the point where this, this would be negative one. So when y equals negative two, x equals negative one. So there's 4a done for us. Now when I look at 4b, I have determined the value for y when x is equal to negative 4, when x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to negative 5. So for this one here, I'm going to go to where x is equal to negative 4 on the x-axis. And I'm going to travel down to where I meet the red line right here and then travel over to my y-axis to find out where we meet it. And right here we're meeting that, that's at negative five. So for 4b, number one, when x equals negative four, y equals negative five. For part two, I have positive two. So this is where we are on the x-axis at positive two. I can come up to there and go straight across. And I can see that that's a positive one. So when x equals positive two, y equals positive one. And finally for part three, when x is five, so x is five right here, I can travel up to my line right here and then come across to here and see that it is four. So when x equals five, y equals four. There we go, so number four is done. And we're now on to number five. Oh. So now number five, very similar question to number four. This graph represents a linear relation. This time we have one going in this direction and it's the same idea. It wants to determine the value for x when y is three, one, and negative two. And then in b, we're determining the value for y when x is negative three, three, and positive six. So first thing we'll come up to our table, or up to our, our graph, sorry. And we'll look, when y is a positive three, which would be right here, we now come across till we meet our red line and then straight down and we can see right here that this here would be a negative three. So for number five, a number one, when y equals three, x equals negative three. Then for two, when y is one, which would be right here, I can come over to here and then I can go down and I can see that that is a positive one. So when y equals one, x equals one. Okay. And now finally, when y equals negative two, so when y negative two is right here. And I will come across till I meet my red line right here. And then this will come up to my x axis right here, which is at seven. So I can say when y equals negative two, x equals seven. Now for B, We have x equals negative three. So when x is equal to negative three, that is right here, 
on the x-axis, and that is where the line, the red line, intersects the, the x-axis. So that would mean that if this is our x-axis, and we come straight across to the y, we're right here at zero. So when x equals negative three, y equals zero. I'm oh, sorry, did I say, that was, sorry, that was positive three. I, I've jumped ahead to part two right here. I might as well just write that in as two. When y is a, or when x is a positive three right here, y is zero. So now I'll do part one, just do them in reverse order, it's okay. So now this is negative three. So when x is negative three, we already covered this one right up above. When x is negative three, now I come this way till I get to the line, then this way till I get to negative four, or no, sorry, positive three. So when y equals, or sorry, when x equals negative three, y equals a positive three. And that corresponds to this one right here, so we know we are correct. Finally, when x is equal to positive six, so when x is equal to positive six right here, I come down to my red line, which is not quite uh, going across to a whole number. So we come across and we're a little bit below two, not quite, oh, about halfway, I guess, between one and two. So I can estimate this to be about 1.5. So I can say for three, when x is equal to six, y would be equal to negative 1.5. So there we go. So that's number five done for us. And if there's any questions about this stuff, please feel free to uh, send me an email and ask me anything right away about this. It can sometimes be a little confusing. So if you're having any trouble at all, please email me as soon as you can. And let's move on to number six. So now number six is over here. And you notice I have the graph over here again, and you'll see why in a moment. So number six, this graph represents a linear relation. And we have our graph and is joining this point to this point only. It doesn't go beyond. So the A is asking us to determine each value for x uh, when y is six, negative four, and eight, and determine each value for y when x is six, negative six, positive six, and nine. The problem is, if we look at our, our graph, it doesn't go to these numbers here. So this is where we need to extrapolate. So I need to extend my graph, and as you can see here, I'm gonna look, what is the absolute lowest value for x? And I can see it's a negative six. So when I wanna redo my x-axis, I can, I can redraw, oh, I might as well do this in black. Redraw this, extending it out, and estimate how far each would be. So if I know that I have a line that is that big there, I can estimate so this here would be a line, a line, a line, a line, a line, a line. So this here would be negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine. And I didn't need to go quite that far, but I did. And then going this way, we can see the highest positive value for X is a positive nine. So I'll keep coming in this direction. So this would be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And again, I'm estimating, so this might not be perfect, but if we had a ruler, it makes it easier to extend. So now when we look at our y values, I have to go from a positive six down to a negative eight at the lowest. So I'm gonna extend this down a fair ways, negative two, negative three. So this here is negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine. And of course, we want to go as high as a positive six. So we can extend this a little bit higher. That's a five. And we can say this here is a six right here. 
So now we have our graph more or less extended. And I can continue, if I have my line going here, I can continue it going straight down like that and straight up like this. It's freehand, it's not perfect, but it's close enough that we'll be able to get what we need out of this here. So now we have the points. So the first one here uh, that we're gonna be looking at is gonna be when y is equal to six. So when y is equal to six, Let's see here, so when y is equal to six, I'll, I'm gonna start by writing the answers over here. And I'm gonna go with number five a one, or sorry, six a one, and y equals, and I believe I just said it was five, or six, y equals six. So when y equals six, which is way up here, we can come straight across till we hit our line we can come straight down to see it's right here. Now I might be off by a little bit. Um, but that would be with 6.5. So X would equal 6.5. Now the next value I have here is Y equals negative four. So for two, Y equals negative four. This is where we'll, y is equal to negative four. And I can come across to my line and come up and I can see it so it's 6.5 this way. So a positive, so this would have been a negative 6.5, my bad, negative 6.5. I'll make that a little clearer. There should be ne negative 6.5. Here, x is gonna equal a positive 6.5 and then the third one is negative eight. When y equals negative eight, which is right here. Now, oh, I might need to extend this line. Even further down, okay. So this one here, eight comes across to here and comes back up to here, so that was probably going to be at least another two paths. So I'm going to say x equals 11. So now when I go and I look at b, 6b, So 6b is x equals negative 6. So I have 6b number 1, x equals negative 6. And I can come back, and I'm able to look at this here. Um, x equals negative 6 right on this point right here. And I can come up to my line here. And I can come over and see it's going to be a about five, or just a little bit above five. We'll just round it to an even five. So this here is y equals five. So now if we look back at C, or B, sorry, um, uh, number two, number of uh, 6B, number two, we can see the value we're looking for here is positive six, okay. So this is a positive six. So we'll come back over to our graph, to where positive six is right here, come down to our line and come across here and see that it's about 1.5.
Okay, so about 1.5, that's what we estimated to be, give or take. Yeah, okay, so, oh. X equals six. Y is about just a little about negative two. It's down at about negative two. Y would equal negative two. So now finally, when we look at oh, when we look at the third one which is x equals 9. So now when we come across to where the x equals 9, we can go down to here and straight across to there. So it's almost to seven, so we'll say y equals negative seven. There we go. Get that one put in place. Great. So that's number six complete. And now we're moving on to number seven. So number seven is very similar. I have this graph over here. I'm going to have to extend it. I can clearly see on this graph here, the same as I did before, that my highest y value is six, which is right here anyways on there. So I don't need to go up any higher. My lowest value would be a negative seven, which would be slightly below this. So I can extend this slightly lower to about there. Oh, we'll do that in black. And this is negative seven right here. Because so this here would be negative six, negative five, negative three, negative one. And I can clearly see with for my x, I start with a negative five and I go to a positive five. And this is going to three and three. So I do need to extend it a little bit further along this way, one and then two. So this here would be four and this would be five. This here is three. And going this way, negative four negative five right here. So now I gotta do the same thing that I had done before with each of these. And the first number I have, so for seven a, y equals negative six. So for seven a, seven a number one, y equals negative six. So for that one there, Oh, was it negative six or positive six? Oh, it's positive six, my bad, positive six. So I'll erase that negative symbol out here. It's positive six. So we wanna find out what x equals when y is a positive six, and y being a positive six would be right here. So now what I really need to do is extend this red line like so, extend this coming this way like so. So now I can come across here to here and then come straight down to there. And I can see that it's at about two and a half. So I can say that x would be 2.5, because it's right there in the middle between two and three. Right here in the middle between two and three. So next one I have is, uh, the next one I have is negative four, y equals negative four. y equals negative four. And right here is where y equals negative four, and I can come across to here, and then head straight up to there. 
and I can see that it's about negative 2.5. So x equals negative 2.5. And finally, we go on to our last y value here, which is negative 7. So y equals negative 7 in this one. So x is going to be, so when y is negative 7, which is down here, I come all the way across to here. Then I come straight up to about there. So that is right on negative 4. So when y is negative 7, x is negative 4. So then when I have b, 7b, number 1, I know that I'm going to come back over here and look and see... Um, x equals negative 5. All right, so x equals negative 5. And now we want to find that on our grid. So if negative 5 is right here, I can come down to here. And I'm actually, look at that, I'm going to have to extend this down a little bit further so that I can estimate where this is going to end up when I come back across. So I know it's lower than negative 7, and it's, it's, I can probably say it's a little bit much further than that. So I'm going to say like, like well, 2 past negative 7. So when x is negative 5, y would equal negative 9. Then for 2, I have x is equal to 3. So when x is equal to 3 right here, I can come straight up to here until I hit that and come over. And if I extended this up past 6, I'd say that, that is close to a 7. So I can say that y equals a positive 7 in this case. Now for this last one here, x is going to be equal to 5. So when x is 5, then I have to come all the way up top here and then over. I really needed to extend this up high. And I can estimate. So if I, if I estimated that this here was 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I can estimate that y would equal 11 here. So that is number seven done for us. If you have any questions on these, please let me know as soon as possible. And we're going to move on to number eight. So now number eight, this is apply. So these ones here are where they give us word problems, and we kind of need to have an understanding of what's going on in the graph in a real-world situation. It's not just numbers. They, these numbers have more of a, a real-world meaning. So this graph shows how the price of a new gaming console ga changes with time. So when it first comes out, it's at $600. And then just to help fill this in a little bit more, this here would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. And if I want to just match this line right here down to here, this is at 15 right here on our x-axis. That's 15. Because it's halfway between 14 and 16. Okay. So A asks us, estimate the cost of the game console five months after it is released. So here, X, this is our X axis right here with our time. This is our Y axis with our cost. And it wants to know the cost of the Xbox, or well, I'm thinking Xbox, because that's just what I have. But it could be the cost of the gaming console after five months. So five months will be right here, right in the middle between four and five, right? There, sorry, four and six, right there. So I can come straight up to here, and then straight over. And I can clearly see that when I do that, it's... A little bit, so if I want to fill out my y-axis a little bit more, this here would be 500. This here would be 300. This is 100. And this blue dot right here would be halfway between 5 and 600. So for A, I can say 
that this would be about in this would be about five hundred and fifty dollars. That's what I'm saying for that one, because it's between five hundred and six hundred. How many months is it until the console costs five hundred? So they're telling us to, it, it, when it costs five hundred, how long did that take? So we can start to figure that one out by starting here at the five hundred dollar mark, coming across till we hit the line right here, coming straight down here. And that's at 10. So we can clearly see that it took 10 months. To go down to $500. And then finally, this one here is asking us to estimate the price of the console one year after it was released. So one year after it released would be 12 months. So when we come over to our table here and we look at 12 months, which is right here. I come straight up till I hit my line here and I come straight across to here and it's a little bit below 500 but it's not quite to the halfway point. So if you said 475 or 480 that would be fine. So we'll say 475 to 480 dollars are really good estimates anywhere in between there because it's higher than the halfway point but it's not all the way up there. So some, somewhere between half uh, 450 and 500 would be these values right here. So now we're looking at number nine. Oh. So number nine. Number nine. Oh. Oh, that wire's moving. Number nine. This graph shows the energy in calories that Kendall burns when he works out on an elliptical machine. So here we go. We have energy is on our y-axis, energy burnt in calories, and time is on the x-axis. So we'll label those just to be consistent, x and y. And we have ourselves a linear relation going on right here. A asks us, estimate how many calories Kendall burns in 20 minutes. So first thing we do is find 20 minutes right here on our time axis. This is where 20 minutes is. We come up till we hit the line and then we can go across to here and we can get an estimate. We can see that after 20 minutes, it's not, it's a, it's a little over 300, uh, and I think just because I grew that a little crooked, it should be a little lower, right to about there. So it'd be over 300, but not quite to the halfway point of 350. So I would say an estimate of $330. $325, $330 is a good estimate. Now for part B, estimate how long Kendall must exercise to burn 400 calories. Well, right here we have 400 calories right on the chart. So here's 400 and I can come across till I hit the line here and come straight down. And I can see, so to fill in our X axis a little bit more, this here would be 25, 15 and five, just to fill it in. So this is a little bit less than 25 minutes. So I can estimate there that to burn 400 calories would be about 24 minutes-ish. It's less than 25, but it's not that much less than 25. So we can say 24 minutes. And finally, estimate how many calories Kendall burns in six minutes. So six minutes is an, isn't marked exactly on here. It's a little bit past the five minute mark right here. So I need to go straight up to here and then straight across to here. Now, if you notice this here would represent 100, 300, 500, and this line is a little bit above 100. Just slightly, well, actually I guess not, I, I kind of went up a little high when I drew that. So I guess if I make it more straight, it kind of lands directly on 100. So I guess, yeah, we'll make that estimate of 100 calories burned. There we go. So that is number nine. 
Dave, again, if you have any questions about number nine, please let me know as soon as possible. Just in case, uh, I know a lot of people out there have questions that sometimes don't think to ask, but please email me if you do. So finally, question 10, I'm gonna do question 10, and question number 11, I'm gonna save for the next assignment, when we can do that using one of our step-by-step -step sheets. So now question number 10. This graph represents a linear relation, and we can see it right here in our graph, straight line. Estimate the value of y when x is negative three, when x is zero, and when x is equal to one, and then explain how we know. Okay. So, this is what I can do. I can make my first value, so for 10 a, x equals negative three. I find negative three right here on the x-axis and I go up and I go straight across to here. And I know that that is about halfway between zero and one. So I can estimate that y equals 0 0.5, or if you want to write it, one half, depending if you want the decimal or the fraction. So how did I do that? I can just say that I went to negative, so it wants me to explain how I did that, and I can say I went to negative three, on the x axis, drew a line till it intercepts our red line, then drew a line right from that point to where it intercepts the y axis at 0 0.5. So that's how I found the doubt. And now this explanation is essentially going to be the same explanation for A, for B, and for C, only you can replace this value within that value with what they, they land on. And that's okay. Um, oh. So there we go. So now, Let's look at B, number 10B. And in 10B, it says when X equals zero. So X is zero right here. So I can just go straight up to there. And that is a little bit over one. Uh, now, I wouldn't say that it is that much, it wouldn't say it's quite to halfway between one and two. So maybe a quarter of the way between one and two. So I can say in this one here, when x equals zero, y would equal 1.25 or one and a quarter. There we go. And then again, I can just paste this in here. And now I can go at take out negative three, put zero in there, and then take out 0 0.5 and put in 1.25. And it's the same. So now when I go and I look at C, number 10C, I have X equals one, Y equals. So when X is equal to one, that'd be right here. And I can go straight up to here and then straight over to there. And I can see that when x is equal to one, uh, to one, y is equal to about 
one and a half, because halfway between one and two at that point. So 1.5 or one and a half. And again, all of my I can just put for the Y, and all I need to do is now change this to a, this was a positive one on the X axis, and this is 1.5 on the Y axis. So there we go. That is how we did questions one to 10. Now, if you have any questions about how any of this was done or any of the other stuff we did in this unit, oh, look at those moving. I better put those back. Close enough. Okay, so there we are. If anyone has any other questions about any of the stuff that I went over in this video, please let me know right away. And if you have those questions, please email me ASAP. I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.